On behalf of our director, Juan Carlos T. Gonzalez, I am welcoming everybody to our eighth biodiversity uh, seminar for this year. And uh, we hold this seminar as a way to promote biodiversity uh, education and conservation. And our speaker today is uh, Francis S. Uh, Ligario. Francis is an assistant professor at the Natural Sciences Department of the Iloilo State, Iloilo Science and Technology University. Uh, currently, he is a PhD candidate on aquatic pathobiology or bacteriology at the Institute of Ag Aquaculture, University of, uh, University of Stirling, Scotland, United Kingdom. Uh, Francis is a grantee of the Department of Science and Technology Newton Agham PhD scholarship which is a collaborative program of the DOSD Science Education Institute and the British Council. Everybody, let's all welcome Francis Legario. Francis? Okay, Francis? Hi, good morning. Hi, good morning. I know it's uh, <laughs> around 2.30 a.m. in the Scotland. Yeah. Dinaman <laughs> right. uh -oh. malamig. Ah, hindi kasi naka -heater. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you for uh, you know, accepting the invitation to talk here at uh, the Museum of Natural History Biodiversity Seminar Series. Okay, you can start now. Thank you very much. Hello, good morning. Uh, naririnig niyo ba ako? Yes, loud and clear, sir. Okay. So, um... This morning, we'll be talking about the diversity of bacterial pathogens uh, associated with farmed Nile tilapia in the Philippines. Uh, this is actually part of my PhD thesis, uh, which is actually on uh, investigating uh, bacterial pathogens affecting farm tilapia in the Philippines. So uh, as I have said, uh, as our MC have said a while ago, this is a collaboration with the, um, the grant from the, the British Council and from the Department of Science and Technology. So um, let's, let's start now. So let's go to uh, the current situation of tilapia farming in the Philippines. So um, global tilapia aquaculture is actually the second in, in the world. So after carp aquaculture. So we know that uh, most of the aquaculture uh, activities are focused in the Southeast Asia and in East Asia, primarily in China. In the Philippines, uh, tilapia farming is primarily done in, in freshwater lakes. And it is concentrated, uh, the, the farming of tilapia in Luzon, but not uh, in Visayas. A, a, a significant production also is being done in Mindanao. But most are the concentration of tilapia farming is primarily done in in Luzon, in central Luzon, and in um, region four. So, um, in terms of uh, production in aquaculture production, we can see here in the graph the the five species that. Uh, the top five species that we actually are uh, producing. So we have here, you can see here the seaweed production, you can see the milkfish, then comes tilapia, uh, prawn and mussel. So in terms of the volume of production of tilapia, uh, it has become steadily declining over the years, although our population is uh, increasing, the, the, the volume of production is in steady or is in de decline. So um, the, the Philippines uh, 
our production of tilapia is mostly for domestic consumption. We do not export tilapia because uh, uh, the demand for tilapia in the local market is very high. And uh, in terms of price, uh, the, the price of tilapia in the global market is lower or is cheaper compared to the price in our domestic market. And one thing more is that uh, um, European countries are quite uh, strict in their uh, quality control because they do not allow uh, animals that have been treated with hormones, especially our tilapia in which most of our tilapia are sex reversed. So they were, they, they, they are treated with uh, methyl testosterone. So yung, yung female tilapia, ginagawa natin male tilapia, so that uh, in terms of, uh, of size of growth, kasi mas, mas uh, mabilis yung growth ng male compared to the, the female tilapia. So in terms of disease and health management, uh, tilapia is now recognized as susceptible to disease. So farmers from, from Luzon, uh, actually not only in Luzon, but in the Philippines are battling diseases that are either bacterial or viral in its etiology, which, uh, in which they experience episodes of mortality outbreaks annually. So um, although uh, we are starting to, to um, expand tilapia production from freshwater to brackish water, so primarily it's a freshwater tayo nag uh, produce ng tilapia, but right now we are trying to explore into the, the brackish water and then into the marine water, but the, the technology and the, the breeds for uh, brackish water and for seawater are not that yet uh, established. So still we are doing freshwater aquaculture with tilapia, but this is an ecological uh, implication because of the, the environmental impact and on the the uh, holding capacity of our freshwater lakes. So um, when we did our survey, so uh, the survival of tilapia in farms is approximately only 10 to 20%. So with the decrease of survival, it is also uh, decrease in terms of the production. So um, in a recently published paper, uh, of academician Rafael Guerrero in the Philippine Journal of Science. There's an article here uh, on farm tilapia production in the Philippines is declining. What has happened and what can be done? So in this paper, uh, he enumerated the major causes of low tilapia production in the country. Number one is high water temperature, lack of government assistance, uh, poor breed of tilapia, high cost of production, lack of capital. So these five are said to be the major causes of low tilapia production. And uh, when we went into the, the farms, when we did the survey, uh, one major problem that the, the farmers are experiencing is infectious diseases. Actually, if you try to look at this in the major causes of tilapia, high water temperature, uh, anong implication ng high water temperature? Uh, in, in the paper, they are, they are trying to, to, to relate high water temperature with, with lower fecundity or reproductive ability of tilapia. Yes, we know that during high temperature, uh, temperature greater than 31 degrees Celsius, the reproductive potential of tilapia decreases. So, hindi siya masyadong itlong. But also, we should take note that high water temperature also causes the, the uh, increase in expression of the virulence factors of bacterial pathogens. So actually, the, the, the diseases of tilapia, or the outbreaks usually occurs during high water temperatures or during summer time. So that's why it is sometimes this, uh, like diseases of streptococcus and the, uh, Motal aromonosyptisemia is um, 
uh, are tied with the uh, increase in water temperature. And then, yeah, we have a poor breed of tilapia um, from, from the Mozambique tilapia in the 1950s, we shifted into the Nile tilapia because of, of the poor growth of the Mozambique tilapia. And then um, right now we're trying to expand to the brackish water. We had to develop saline tolerant tilapia. So the Bureau of Fisheries is now trying to develop this Molubicus and the best uh, versus the best strain. So the Molubicus is actually a hybrid of the Mozambica and the Nilotica tilapia. So uh, they, they, in their preliminary results, um, they, they found out that they, that they grow uh, better now at higher salinity. In seawater, we are using Mindanao. Uh, they are using the re red hybrid tilapia. And yeah, high cost of production in terms of feed because of the intensification of culture. Intensification of culture causes the fish to get stress, thus uh, making them prone to infections and also a uh, lack of capital. So actually, if you try to go to Ta'a Lake, most of the, the tilapia operators, they have uh, uh, Chinese financiers in their uh, aquaculture production. So um, let's go now to tilapia as drug, uh, I mean, as disease resistant. So tilapia are generally believed to be disease resistant fish. Uh, but with the intensification of production, diseases have emerged. So uh, if you try to look at here, these are the important diseases of tilapia. So we have here streptococcus, which is co caused by your streptococcus agalacti, this agalacti, streptococcus in the uh, lactococcus garvey. You have your aeromoniasis, columnaris, Francis Chilosis, Edward Chilosis, we have here your, your tilapia lake virus disease, or this is also known as your um, syncytial hepatitis uh, disease of tilapia. And then we have also here your uh, ISKNBD. So we have there is uh, here the infectious uh, spleen kidney, uh, infectious spleen and kidney necrosis virus disease, which is caused by megalo. Uh, cytovirus, and then have the other fungal and parasitic infections. So actually, um, tilapia are naturally, they should be uh, hardy fish, but with the intensification, with the higher demand for protein for tilapia, when you try to intensify production, you, you, you increase the stocking density of the fish in a particular uh, cubic area, then you cause uh, stress to the fish. So thus the fish becomes um, uh, susceptible now to various bacterial diseases. So we did our field work in the Philippines uh, together with the Fisheries uh, Biotechnology Center. So here in the here are the areas in which we did the, the, the sampling. So here in Ta'a Lake, we had also in Laguna Lake, in also in Kalawan. So we had grow out farms and uh, hatcheries. So we have fresh water, we have uh, brackish water in Pampanga, we have seawater tilapia farm in Panabo in Davao. So um, we did also uh, what we call this one um, survey questionnaire with the farmer uh, asking their husbandry and their health management practices in relation to disease outbreaks. Okay, so uh, we have here the diagnostic sampling. So we, we visited the different tilapia farms. And then we, together with the, the, with the Fishers Biotechnology Center, and then we sample tilapia. And then here uh, we take note of the clinical signs of the fish. And then we did the bacterial recovery. 
and he also sampled the tissues for histopathology. Okay, so in terms of bacterial isolation and characterization, so bacterial recovery was primarily done uh, from, we recover bacteria from the spleen, the kidney, and the brain. Uh, we use uh, well, uh, either a general purpose medium or a, this one is an Edwards medium. This is a, a selective medium for the isolation of streptococci. And then, um, yeah, we did conventional tests like, yeah, your gram staining, your oxidase catalase, your uh, oxidation fermentation tests. We did also API 20E for gram negative and API 20 strep for gram positive. And then, yeah, hemolysis. And then we also did uh, molecular identification like your um, 16S rRNA gene sequencing. We have also species specific uh, duplex PCR. We also did some uh, molecular serotyping. We also did uh, the RPOD for the identification of the Aeromonas group. Okay, so based from the result, um, from the sampling sites, uh, we have here recovered, um, actually recovered uh, a lot of bacteria, but I am only showing here the, the bacteria that are implicated in the disease in fish. So we have your uh, Streptococcus inei. So in, in Taal, it is only found in Taal Lake. And then you have your Streptococcus agalacti. So we, we detected that one also in Taal and also in Kalawan Laguna in the hatchery areas. So we have also your Aeromonas veronae. Then you have your Aeromonas decensis, Aeromonas jandii, Aeromonas caviae. You have your Lactococcus garbiae. You have also Lactococcus lactis. Then Lactococcus taiwanensis, Enterococcus hirae, Streptococcus luticensis, Vibrio harveyi, and Vibrio alginolyticus. They were recovered from deceased uh, or moribund fish in seawater in, in Davao. So we did not recover this uh, from um, the freshwater areas. Okay. So uh, this uh, bacterial species are implicated in diseases, bacterial diseases in fish. So enterococci uh, are also uh, said to be causing a streptococcus-like disease also in tilapia. So let's, let's go to streptococcus in farmed night tilapia. So streptococcus is a disease um, that is septicemic, meaning that uh, it uh, disseminates into the organs and tissues of the fish. And it, it is a neurological disease, meaning that primarily the, the bacteria attacks the brain of the fish. So um, metropism as a brain. So meaning it is attracted uh, to the brain of, of the fish. So uh, in, in terms of uh, streptococcosis, it is important for us to sample really the brain and uh, um, establish the disease by looking at the histopathology of the brain. You can see that the brain would be, um, what do you call this one, inflamed and with bacteria. As you can see here, the, the the pop eye or the exophthalmia, the bilateral exophthalmia, uh, it could be a consequence of the neurological involvement, but it's not always uh, with the with the with the uh, neurological involvement because other bacterial diseases can also cause uh, exophthalmia. So this particular disease is multifactorial. Uh, it depends on the age of the fish or on the host or on the type of the species of the fish, fish and on the strain of the pathogen. 
and streptococcosis is caused by more than one bacterial species. So for gram positive, we did molecular identification. First, we did our species-specific duplex PCR. Uh, we developed this, uh, this duplex PCR to discriminate Streptococcus agalactiae from Streptococcus inii. So um, in Streptococcus agalactiae, we use the 16 to 23 intergenic spacer region of the 16S which is specific for S. agalactiae. So it will give you a bond of around 270 or something like that one. And then also for Streptococcus inii, we use uh, the lactate oxidase gene, which is specific for the S. inii, and it is around 870 also here. So you can see that uh, here these samples are positive for this uh, particular gene. So uh, this is Streptococcus agalactiae, and this one is S. inii. In order to confirm our species-specific duplex PCR, we did the 16S rRNA PCR and sequencing. So um, we, we sequence the, the, the 16S of the bacteria, and then we blast that one in the NCBI, and then we were able to, um, to get the homology, the highest homology. So these were, this is S inia and S agalactia were confirmed by the 16S rRNA PCR and sequencing. But what's the implication of this in, for example, in diagnostics? In terms of implication in diagnostics, Species-specific duplex PCR is economical than the 16S because in 16S rRNA, uh, after you amplify the 16S rRNA gene, you had to do your um, purification and you have the purification kit is quite expensive. Then after purification, you send your purified uh, DNA into a company for sequencing, and then you will pay an agar for that one. Whereas in species-specific duplex PCR, you can just extract the DNA, perform the PCR, just have the positive controls, and then you would know whether your sample is s -NEA or s agalactic You don't need purification and sequencing for this. So this is more economical for uh, laboratories doing diagnostics in their farms. So um, uh, then we also did um, molecular serotyping for the capsular gene because they, they for, for this one is for um, S. agalactiae because the S. agalactiae, um, it is made up of, uh, around nine or 10, 10 serotypes, I mean. And uh, the serotypes one, ser serotype 1A, 1B, serotype 2, and serotype 3 are the serotypes that are infecting fish. So we have to perform uh, serotyping because it has implications for vaccine development because we should always remember that uh, one serotype do not confer cross protection with another serotype. So if we vaccinate a fish with a different serotype, and then the fish in that particular geographical area, there is more than one serotype of that particular species of bacterium, then the fish can still be infected and disease outbreak can still occur because there is no cross-protection between different serotypes of Streptococcus agalactiae. So um, aside from the, M, the MPCR, we are actually now doing multi leuco sequence typing for our Streptococcus agalactiae, but uh, I still cannot give you the, the, the data at the moment because uh, uh, we, we cannot uh, at the moment share because we need to, to, to publish for this one. 
So um, I will I will tell you later on why we need to do the uh, the, uh, the multi local sequence typing because it has an implication in zoonotic uh, um, zoonotic streptococcus agalactiae. Okay, so phylogeography of streptococci in the Aquavac website. Uh, this one, this this map was taken from the Aquavac. It's an Aquavaxin company. Um, the the Streptococcus agalactiae, this biotype one is also known as serotype 1A. The Streptococcus agalactiae biotype two is known as the Streptococcus agalactiae serotype 1B. So biotype one is 1A, biotype two is 1B. And then we have the Streptococcus inea. So these three are the main causative agent of Streptococcosis in tilapia in the, in the world. So, according to the, to the diagnostic survey of Aquabac, uh, the serotype or the biotype 1 or serotype 1B, uh, no, I mean serotype 1A, is prevalent in Asia, particularly in China, in Thailand, in Vietnam, in Malaysia, but not in the Philippines. The serotype uh, 1A or the biotype I mean biotype 2 or 1B, sorry, I'm, I'm in interchanging them. Biotype 2 is 1B, is prevalent in the South America. We know that South America is also um, one of the major producers of tilapia in the world, South America and Central America. So nandito yung biotype 2 or 1B also in Africa and also in the Philippines and in Indonesia. But based from our survey, we detected biotype 1 or serotype 1A in the Philippines. It is more prevalent than the biotype 2. So ang biotype, uh, biotype 2 is only uh, found in Taal Lake, but not in the other areas in the Philippines. That's that's based from our our diagnostic sampling. While the uh, biotype one was found in different areas in the Philippines, it's more prevalent. So right now, the serotype one A should be now recognized in the Philippines. So this is actually the first report to report serotype 1A in the Philippines. And not only that, we also detected the presence of Lactococcus garvii in one farm. And this is implication because Lactococcus garvii also causes uh, lactococcosis, which is quite similar to streptococcosis. And this uh, also causes uh, severe uh, disease in tilapia. So these two should now be reported uh, in the Philippines. So uh, aside from the identification, we did also uh, characterize the, 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 the bacteria. So we have here the Streptococcus inea and the Agalactiae in terms of the virulence factor. So in SNEA, so you have, we did the six uh, virulence genes. So these genes are involved in adhesion, in invasion, and in the evasion of the host immune system. And yeah, these are all present in the SNEA. So meaning that uh, uh, the Philippine isolates of Streptococcus NEA is quite similar to other Streptococcus inea found in the other parts of the globe, which causes um, outbreaks of streptococcosis. So they have all these virulence factors. In Streptococcus agalactiae, so serotype 1A and 1B. So in serotype 1A, all of this are present in serotype 1A. The 
Sile E, FBSA, CFB, and, and the others. While in serotype 1B, the Sile E gene is absent. So, so what's, what's the implication of the Sile E gene? So the Sile E gene is actually the structural gene involved in hemolysis. So it's a hemolysin. Uh, it produces the, it's the gene responsible for the production of hemolysin. And hemolysin is a protein that uh, destroys your red blood cells. So you can see here the Streptococcus agalacti 1A, the colonies here. Around the colonies, you can see the, the zone of clearing. Uh, it's not that that really quite big compared to your uh, Aeromonas species in which you, you really can see very wide, uh, wide uh, clearance around the colonies. You can see your small clearance, but this is hemolytic Streptococcus agalactiae. And this one, you can see here the small colonies of the Streptococcus agalactiae 1b. You cannot see the zones of hemolysis. So um, yeah. These three isolates uh, are Streptococcus agalacti, and we cannot amplify. We did not detect the presence of Sile E gene. Uh, so we confirm the hemolytic reaction in sheep blood agar by the absence of also of this particular gene during the PCR. Others are here. These are not uh, uh, Streptococcus. So they are other species of bacteria. So. What is the, the, the implication of, of the sile e, of, of hemolysis in streptococcus? Uh, it's an important factor in the development of chronic infection. Kasi meron tayong mga tilapia na that they would appear healthy, but uh, they are actually having subclinical infections. Meron silang infections in their brain, but you cannot see them out, the, the, the outside the fish. They look healthy. They look... Uh, um, good, but uh, actually they, they have the bacteria inside of their um, system. So um, overexpression of hemolysis actually causes decreased survivability of your Streptococcus agalacti in the macrophage of the tilapia. Um, they say that uh, because of their Kasi masyado silang virulent, uh, the, the, the tilapia macrophage would re readily destroy the S. agalacti, unlike the Streptococcus agalacti 1b, in which they do not uh, produce hemolysin, they can, when they are engulfed by the macrophage, they remain dormant inside the macrophage. So parang... Trojan, Trojan horse effect. So they hijack the macrophage so that they can readily cross the blood brain barrier. And when they are in the brain of the, the tilapia, and when the tilapia is uh, already um, very stressed and immunocompromised, they would cause uh, lysis of the macrophage and then they start to go out and then they would start to cause meningitis and later on meningoencephalitis. So um, your strep agalactia 1A actually uh, causes here acute streptococcosis. It's more implicated in acute streptococcosis, while your streptococcus agalactia 1B is more implicated in the more chronic form of streptococcosis. So. Uh, uh, during uh, when we did our histopathology, you can see that uh, fish infected with Streptococcus agalacti 1a, uh, the bacteria are highly disseminated in the organs. There are higher, there is high number of bacteria in the spleen, the kidney, the heart. Unlike in S. agalacti 1b, there is uh, few, there are fewer bacteria in these organs, and the bacteria are concentrated more in the brain than in the um, different organs. Okay, so we also did some antimicrobial profile and resistance genes. So um, all of the S-INI and S-agalacti-1A isolates were 
they were all susceptible to amoxicillin, penicillin, ampicillin, vancomycin, fluorophenicol, enrofloxacin, erythromycin, chloramphenicol, we have here oxytetracycline, tetracycline, and sulfamethasazole trimetrofrin. So uh, except for chloramphenicol, in the Philippines, this is prohibited in aquaculture, the use of chloramphenicol. And we also do not use vancomycin. We just uh, the, tested this for, uh, well, we just want to, to see the, the susceptibility of this, this bacteria because these bacteria are zoonotic. They have the ability also to infect humans given a, uh, a ample con the right condition they can infect also humans. So we just tried to, to, to um, check on the, uh, this uh, vancomycin, but uh, the, the other antibiotics except for chloramphenicol are used in aquaculture industry. Uh, they are allowed in the Philippines. So they are all, they are all resistant to oxalinic acid, but the resistance of oxalinic acid is uh, inherent resistance of the streptococci especially the s -E and s agalacti So well, we should not be alarmed on the resistance to oxalinic acid because they are, this is chromosomally uh, induced uh, resistance in your streptococci. Uh, s agalacti one b is uh, resistant to SXT and OE. Um, we hypothesize that uh, the resistance to SXT has something to do with the metabolic uh, anomaly in S. agalacti 1b. This uh, small, we, we, we observed that this S. agalacti 1b is a small colony variant, very, very small. Yung colonies nila even after 48 to 72 hours. So some papers have uh, uh, studied this, this small colony variant in, in staphylococci and other bacteria. And these small colony variants of bacteria are metabolically defective. So it has something to do with their survivability in the macrophage. So uh, because uh, they, they, they have a defect in their, um, their aerobic uh, respirations, something like that one. So, uh, so that um, they are they become resistant to reactive oxygen species and oxidative stress, so they, they can survive more in the macrophage. So that maybe this has something to do with why is it resistant to sulfamethoxazole trimetrophrin because of its uh, metabolic uh, defect. We do, did not detect any antimicrobial resistance gene from the isolates of streptococci. So as I have said, in terms of histopathology, you can see here the, the, the brain infected with s -NEA versus one with s agalacti -A. So yung s -NEA at s agalacti -A, serotype 1b, they have the same histological lesions in the brain. You can see here, these are macrophages with your bacteria inside the brain. So this is actually now meningoencephalitis because it does not only involve the meninges of the brain, but the brain itself, the cortex of the brain. So you can see the, um, a lot of macrophage infiltration in the brain already. While in your uh, serotype 1A, the, there is inflammation of the meninges, but the bacteria are found within the blood capillaries, but you cannot see presence of bacteria filled macrophages. So this has something to do with uh, chronic and acute streptococcosis. So the, 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 this particular fish may have harbored um, the streptococci for a long time, and then that the streptococci are already in the macrophage waiting to come out when the fish uh, becomes uh, very stressed or immunocompromised. So here you can see a beautiful photomicrograph of the streptococci in the necrotic hepatocytes of your liver. So you can see that your hepatocytes should be polygonal in shape. Now they have become necrotic. You can see 
uh, the, 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 the bacteria slowly destroying your uh, hepatocytes. So they have become necrotic because of the production of the uh, hemolytic factors and some virulence uh, proteins of the bacteria. So let's go now to the motile aromonasthesemia. So I will only focus on two groups, streptococci and the aromonas. So uh, the, this motile aromon septicemia is also known as hemorrhagic septicemia, the red sore and red pest. And you can see here in Tilap, I saw this one in, uh, it's not in this one. So yeah, I just use an example. So you can see that the tilapia here, that's a uh, red uh, marks on its body. So sometimes you can see petechiae, hemorrhages, sometimes you can see redness, yeah. Okay, so um, yung mga studies sa Philippines, kasi kakaunti lang yung studies natin sa Philippines. Uh, usually, wala tayong masyadong publications. We do not have a lot of publications, scientific publications in the Philippines. So that's why we lack literature in the Philippines uh, in terms, for example, on um, fish diseases. Uh, na ano na tayo, na unahan na tayo ng, ng other Southeast Asian countries, like just like Vietnam and, and Thailand, they are very uh, vigilant in terms of fish diseases. So yung, yung mga studies before in, in Aeromonas was the, the, the Aeromonas hydrophila is implicated in epizootic ulcerative syndrome, but right now, we know that EUS is not caused anymore by Aeromonas hydrophila, but by Aphanomyces uh, fung fungi. Then motile Aeromonas septicemia. There are some papers here in the Philippines, uh, also published papers in the Philippines on microbiota in tilapia. They, they found Aeromonas in the gut of the tilapia, but on healthy tilapia and also on the presence of the aeromonas in the pond environment of tilapia. But what is uh, quite uh, disturbing because um, the identification tests are only conventional or the only uses API 20E. So what's the implication of this? Uh, most of the studies here, they did only uh, use conventional or API 20E. We know that API 20E is, is not good uh, ID test, especially for fish bacteria. So the, the API 20E cannot identify uh, specifically or correctly your aeromonas. So th these two papers are published actually in one is in aquaculture research and the other one is in, yeah, they are ISI journals, but uh, uh, that's why in one of the studies, they said that they were able to identify Aeromonas salmonicida, but without it, because Aeromonas salmonicida do not affect or cannot, uh, is not present in tropical areas, Aeromonas salmonicida is only present in, in temperate and in cold uh, areas of, of the globe. Uh, so most of these studies actually always point to uh, the Aeromonas aldrophila. So kawawa yung Aeromonas aldrophila. So palagi na lang siya. <laughs> so we also do not uh, use, uh, what do you call this one? Sorry. Um, the 16 rRNA gene sequencing is it is, it is nice to, to use 16S just to, uh, for the genus, but for Aeromonas that is a tight, tight taxonomic group, um, 16S is of little value because, um, because of the low uh, discriminatory power of the 16S uh, rRNA gene sequencing. Uh, it, it has also low interspecific variation. So 
if you if you are using the 16s rRNA gene sequencing in order to identify um, aeromonas, it might give you a wrong speciation because of the the low discriminatory power and uh, the the low interspecific variation. Uh, in, in terms of, of the, the rate of evolution of the 16S rRNA gene, it's quite very slow in Aeromonas. So it cannot, it cannot uh, correctly um, speciate your Aeromonas. So what then? So we, we will we'll be using the housekeeping genes. Yeah, so there are, there's the GAIRB, there is the RPOB, and there is the uh, RPOD. So, if you really want to um, to correctly identify our our Aeromon species, we we need to use the housekeeping genes. You you can either choose the GAIRB, the RPOB, or the RPOD gene. So, these are the Aeromonas that we recovered from deceased tilapia. So we have the Aeromonas veronae. Jandii, Kabye, and the Kansas. And the result confirms the results of other uh, researchers from Southeast Asia that in the natural infection in fish with Aeromonas, it is not Aeromonas hydrophila actually that dominates, it's Aeromonas veronae. And we also confirmed that one in the Philippines, we did not recover any Aeromonas hydrophila from deceased tilapia, but instead recovered Aeromonas veronae as the most prevalent, but then we are also able to recover Aeromonas jandii from the cystilapia. We also is called Aeromonas cabiae and also Aeromonas decensis. This one, the, 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 the gel image I'm showing to you is the, the gel image in which I did uh, um, optimization of the RPOD gene. I cannot yet uh, show to you some of our data because it, the, the paper is now submitted in a journal. So um, we, do, we do not want to, yeah. Anyway, it, it, it will come out uh, hopefully later on when the, the, the paper would be accepted because we already submitted that one. So uh, Aside from that, uh, we also characterize your, the aeromonas. We detected 15 virulence genes. And uh, based from the virulence genes, we were able to uh, know 12 genotypes of aeromonas based on their virulence genes. So here you can see, uh, you can see it here, you can see here the, uh, PCR amplification of the ACT virulence gene. ACT virulence gene is a cytotoxic enterotoxin. So together with your aerolysin, your ACT virulence gene and aerolysin gene are important genes for the establishment of infection in aeromonas. And also that they cause uh, fluid accumulation in the intestinal loop of the tilapia. That's why most of the samples have ascites. They have a be big belly. So uh, you can see it here that yeah, all of the isolate has this uh, cytotoxic interotoxin gene. And this ACT gene also has a hemolytic function. That's why all of the aeromonas species that we have are hemolytic. So talagang um, ano siya, uh, virulent siya. In terms of antimicrobial profile and resistance genes, 80% of the aeromonas are multi-resistant. So we say multi-resistant when a particular bacterium is resistant to two or more antibiotic classes, not antibiotic in itself, but classes. So it could either be uh, your beta-lactamases, your quinolones, your aminoglycoside, your sul sulfonamides, your trimetrophrine. So we did 26 antimicrobial resistance genes. So we have your extended um, spectrum beta-lactamases, your ASBL, your plasmid-mediated quinolone resistance, aminoglycoside resistance, tetracycline resistance. So I'm just showing here to you 
uh, the PCR amplification of the TET-E gene, which was present in some of the isolate, and that e, the TET-E gene con that confers resistance to tetracycline and oxytetracycline is the most common uh, gene present in fish in aquaculture. So um, it's quite uh, concerning because some of these also uh, of these isolates have integrons. Integrons are uh, part of the DNA that contains antimicrobial uh, cassette. So the 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 the, the, integ the integron gene produces the integrase protein that allows the mobility of this antimicrobial cassettes. So they can move from one organism bacterium to another, and it can uh, what you call this one um, horizontal uh, exchange of the antimicrobial cassette. So you can see it here. The also the the presence of this uh, gram-negative bacteria that we suspect as uh, Aeromonas. So in the spleen. So you can see this one here is the melano macrophage. So usually, if you're trying to look at for bacteria in tissues, you try to look them near in the melano macrophage because. The, the bacteria, uh, the, the melanomacrophage should be formed near the, the site where the bacteria congregates also. So uh, in conclusion, the major findings of our studies, we are the first to report the presence of S. agalactiae 1 in the Philippines as consistent with findings from Southeast, from other Southeast Asian countries. So this, this S. agalactiae is more prevalent than the S. agalactiae 1 b uh, reported already because we have already published this in the Journal of Fish Diseases, the result. A. Veronia is the dominant aeromonas species associated with deceased farm tilapia. And we are also the first to detect A. jandii cabie and the cancers associated with deceased farm tilapia in the Philippines. And also the first to detect uh, the presence of L. garvie associated with deceased farm tilapia and also detected Enterococcus hirei and Enterococcus kuluweki associated with deceased farm tilapia. Maybe the first also. We also say first to detect because we have not yet, uh, we, we, did, uh, we did submit this for publication, but it's not yet accepted. So we still see the first to detect. So um, I hope that uh, uh, we have a now, uh, Quite appreciated that that the tilapia is not a hardy fish, and that a lot of bacterial species, a diverse bacterial species, are actually contributing to disease and mortality outbreaks in our tilapia farms in the Philippines, and it's a contributory factor why our production is quite decreasing or is quite steady over the years. So um, I hope that uh, well. Uh, some of you would go also into uh, uh, fish diseases because as a major aquaculture producing country in the world, uh, we lack uh, manpowers and scientists that are involved in fish diseases and diagnostics. So thank you very much. And uh, that's all for, for today. So we I would like to thank the British Council the Southeast Asian Fisheries Development Center Aquaculture Department, the Fisheries Biotechnology Center, and most of all, the Department of Science and Technology for the grant for this PhD study. So thank you very much. Okay, wow. A very interesting uh, topic right now, especially <laughs> that um, we have so many problems with the zoonotic diseases yeah. and you know the supply. Yeah. Alam mo naman ang yeah. pork ngayon is around uh -oh. 400 pesos per kilo, and I think we have to rely more and more on uh, on uh, other sources of protein, uh, especially yeah. in tilapia. But uh, my my question is: um, Are these diseases that you have reported are they prevalent enough to be some sort of a 
uh, concern for BFAR and the uh, DA to you know, to declare uh, like a food emergency, especially now uh -huh. that we have a problem with, with pork and poultry. Uh, prices are going to, through the roof. <laughs> Actually, uh, these, they are still in denial stage. I see. That... Here. Uh, they, they, yeah, they, they, they say that tilapia is it's a hardy fish, it doesn't get sick. But when you go to, to the field, the, the farmers are really actually uh, saying that they have problems of mortality, especially during summertime, mm -hmm. when the, the water temperatures become high. Uh, imagine the stock, the, 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 the survival is only 20% of the stock. I see. So instead of two production period for one year, we only have one production for, for tilapia. And, and this is quite a concern because of uh, uh, the, 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 the bacteria that affects the, this tilapia are also able to cause infections in humans. They are zoonotic. Okay. So how about, you know, um, I think you've heard probably in the past few years, there mga massive fish kills. Uh, they mm -hmm. say that it's because of the ano yung tawag um, the turnaround upwelling upwelling, upwelling. Uh, uh, so may relation din kaya yung you know having these diseases so ba, hindi ba disease co uh, uh, caused by the disease yung yung uh, yung fish kill rather than uh, actually, the upwelling uh, the, 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 the fish kill is, is is a separate event mm -hmm. um Yung, yung massive talaga, yung it, it, it affects all the cages in, in Taalik. But if you try to look at this uh, um, diseases in tilapia, hindi siya one time, hindi siya nag-occur one time, it is occurring whole year round. It's like a systemic sa tilapia. Yeah, nandun na, nandun na talaga, oo. So, so if you try to look at it, you... It's given you, that when you uh, have an op uh, uh, hatchery operation or a grow out, Meron ka talaga dyan na, na, na sakit. Ang yeah. okay. Actually, ang ginagawa nila is nag-overstock sila para even if 20% lang ang mag-survive, if you stock mm -hmm. 300,000, you still have enough na na na, ay, ay. na, okay. na malap in your in your cages. But the, 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 the sad thing is that uh, yeah, um, instead of having two production cycles, nagiging isa na lang kasi Nag-humahaba nag yung culture period because yung fish, they are slowly growing, nagkakasakit, parang ganun. Okay. So we have a question from, let me read. Uh, hey. uh, so, okay. So, uh, message from Roda May Simora. Her question is, what is the current approved treatment for streptococcus? streptococcus? I have mm -hmm. in tilapia farms in the Philippines. So, meron na ba? In the Philippines, um, actually, wala. Because we do not encourage actually antibiotics. And if, if we encourage vaccination, parang hindi siya economical ang vaccination strategy. Kasi, uh, masyadong mura yung tilapia. Mm -hmm. So, pag mag-vaccinate ka ng fish, uh, i isa isa mo silang iba vaccinate you need manpower so it's you like need the vaccine parang pinapatak na parang polio back vaccine Ay, inject talaga in oh. inject Nahirap injection <laughs> uh, yung, yung yung 1 kilogram of tilapia is around only 150 pesos i don't know the price in manila mm -hmm. so hindi siya economical so but if you try to to, to develop vaccine by immersion or through feed, hindi naman siya as effective as uh, yeah. um, Yung injection. injection. So we're trying to, to go into more in good husbandry practice mm -hmm. and um, health management. Parang ganun. We need to reduce cages in Taalik. We need to reduce stocking density. We need to produce specific pathogen-free fry from specific pathogen-free breeders because we did sample also from hatchery broodstock to ang broodstock infected, ang grow out infected, ang mm -hmm. fry infected. Ganun na. 
yung nagsusupply from Kalawan, from Laguna, sinusupply nila to Taale. Meron so, ng infection. Meron ng infection. Okay. So, okay. Uh, at least we understand that uh, there's that uh, systemic cycle of disease, no? Yeah, uh, yeah. Affecting the the whole industry, regardless kung ano siyang, regardless of the area or the site. Um, okay. Yeah. So, wala kang ligtas, basically, no? If, if you're... If the fry that you are sourcing out ay doon pa lang ay meron na siyang uh, meron ng meron bacteria. ng bacteria. And ang uh, yung sa streptococcus kasi um this very concerning because recently in in Singapore they have an outbreak in humans foodborne streptococcus and then it was found out that it came from tilapia from raw because they 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 consume right. um raw tilapia but in the philippines it, it doesn't matter because we do not eat raw tilapia so meron outbreak and causes septicemia in bacteria maraming nagkasakit um there is one practice in taale yung mga workers kag makikita nila yung tilapia na nagkakasakit kino collect nila and then they sell it also ah uh, okay <laughs> mahirap yon <laughs> Yeah, kasi konti lang naman yung sweldo. So it's an oh. added income. But the fish is sick. That's why mayroong mga tilapia na 50 pesos lang per kilogram. Most probably those are diseased The fish. diseased ones. Okay. So, so another question from Ms. Josette Hisuan. Hisuan. Um, ah. What are the current efforts being done to disseminate information about fish diseases in the Philippines? Uh, yun ang sabi natin kulang tayo sa information on fish diseases. Uh, kokonti lang talaga ang nagwo-work on fish diseases. Although we have a very big aquaculture industry, uh, before, yeah, in, in, in Taan Lake, they are, yeah, they have leaflets. They are also saying that this uh, hibay, tinatawag na yan nilang hibay, and that particular disease is parang nandun na si, sa system. So, uh, actually, sineseminar naman yung mga tilapia farmers, but wala rin kasi they have to increase production because the demand is also high. But we have limited. Kasi ang sabi ko, uh, limited kasi yung freshwater areas natin. Eh. So, they have to intensify production in freshwater, but we know intensification causes disease. So, we have to expand to brackish water, but still we do not have the, the good breed. Kasi pag mataas yung salinity, yung growth ng tilapia, nagsasustant. So, we have to expand to, to marine and to brackish water. Okay. Um, uh, siguro side question lang. Kasi sa, sa meat and poultry, we have this... Uh... NMIS, the National Meat Inspection Service. Do we also have that kind of, you know, agency for for fish, for aquaculture? I think we, we no, we do not inspect fish in the market. Oh, di ba? Kasi di ba yung baboy may tatakian, di ba? May uh -oh. uh, may may <laughs> mitsilian. Naglumabas ng slaughterhouse ng abartwa. Uh -oh. diba? so, may tatak siya. Wala, wala tayong ganyang system sa Philippines. Kasi isa isahin mo yung Maliliit naman yung fish, no? Eh, yeah. sa, may marine, sa marine water, may sa aquaculture. Meron tayong fish quarantine, but the fish quarantine is more on export-import mm -hmm. ng BFAR. Pero in terms of, uh, of, of uh, tawag mo yun, inspection in markets mm -hmm. of the fish that comes into markets, no? Wala, wala. As you observe, wala tayong system na ganyan. Yes, okay. So, from Miss uh, L.C. Cacho, uh, Sir, what do you suggest in terms of management in aquaculture to avoid uh, pooling or pool of bacteria in the fish? Uh, siguro yung bakit dumadami? So ano bang mga pwede nating uh, like um, uh, husbandry practices that should be corrected? Yeah, actually, sinasabihan na nga silang mag-decrease ng, ng number of cages. For example, in Taal Lake, Kasi ang dami-daming cages and the holding capacity of the lake, hindi kaya ng lake yon. Tapos yung mga cages, maliit lang, pero ang dami-daming fish inside. So stress talaga yung fish. 
actually if the bacteria is present in the water it would not cause disease when the when the fish is immunocompetent kasi madidestroy ng fish ang ano eh, ng immune system ng fish yung bacteria but if the fish is already immunocompromised because of the high stocking density madali silang magkasakit magkasakit okay so siguro yeah. yun ang so, pinaka primary na ba recommendation is that yung stocking density ay dapat sinusunod talaga no regardless mm. kung um may konting ano ba uh, let's say problems with your income di ba kasi yeah. alam naman natin yan naghahabol sila ng ng kita di ba kita. Okay, but you know it's quite it's quite difficult to to reduce the number of cages in Taalik because it involves political, political. and socio-political aspect. So that's aquaculture in the Philippines is quite is very difficult because it involves socio-political yes. aspect. Okay. Uh, <laughs> another question from Miss Elsie: uh, Are your findings directly? Do they directly affect uh, human health? Uh, uh, what should well, we do to avoid this scenario? Like. Maybe Elsie is uh, thinking of like like zoonotics, you know, nagjump yeah, yeah. yung sakit. Oh. Yeah, actually, I, kasi wala tayong masyadong research on fish to human transmission in the field. Konti lang talaga yung ta ang yung mga scientists natin that doing that one. It's a very good actually study yung yung from fish to humans. For example, yung er- diarrhea in in humans caused by aeromonas we know now, now that that diarrhea can also be caused by aeromonas because of this the, the, their virulence factor in terms of streptococcus uh, kapag maluto mo yung fish okay lang yun kasi hindi naman mamamatay naman sila pero in terms of handling the fish uh kung may sugat ka pwedeng mag-cause ng bacteremia later so that's the implication lang sa, sa human health mm-hmm. so um Uh, yeah, we we don't have much data to 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 support this in the Philippines. So, mag maganda sana kung merong mag-research dyan sa sa Taale, yeah. sa Batangas. It's it's those are still gray areas. So we we cannot really answer that at the moment. Uh, someone is asking that uh, while you said uh, earlier that uh, we lack the manpower or the scientist uh, to to these uh, kinds and types of uh, of studies no on fish fish diseases uh, would you mind to suggest for a you know training capability that can be funded by like bfar or other institutions uh, i think uh, some of these uh, some of our up and coming uh, researchers would be you know interested to to attend and probably see if yeah. that's an area that I, they could go to actually uh I'll I'll come back there on August, and uh, one of the the the, the, the uh, will be have the having meeting with BFAR and DOST regarding this, and we will be doing some trainings in fish diagnostics because na na ano na tayo eh na unahan na tayo ng Vietnam at ng Thailand they're very active they have collaboration we here with the University of Stirling Institute of Aquaculture we are the leading institute in terms of fish diseases and pathology in the world. So wala tayong collaboration with with other fish disease uh, institutes in the world. So so uh, scientists here are now trying to well we'll start collaborating with the Philippines because of this uh, we have our one of the highest aquaculture producing country in the world. So we'll we'll be we'll be trying to do to have trainings maybe so just wait for the the announcement um, hopefully after this covid yeah, yeah we can do that one because we'll do practical sa daungan. Yeah, mahirap naman kung pati yan ay naka-zoom, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, a uh, question from Mary Lou Cambronero. Um, she asks, which parameters are necessary to develop a model on the economic sustainability of small fish production in Panda culture? I, um, uh, I hope you get that Mary Lou, uh, I think I cannot answer that question. Sorry. Because I'm not more into into production and into modeling, my work is more on disease diagnostics. But yeah, uh, what what I, we can only recommend is that yeah we have to follow the the, the stocking densities, reduce uh, number of cages in a particular area because these are risk factors 
and then also the 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 we we should have specific pathogen free breeders kasi wala tayong mga accredited hatcheries eh, in the Philippines kasi nagbi-breed lang sila na on their own mm -hmm. uh, we don't know in breeding we don't know that the, the, the breeders have infections already because they could have subclinical or chronic infections so yung fry nila infected na rin kasi wala tayong walang may nagmo-monitor ng mga hatcheries so wala wala accreditation so and i think very very recently there was i don't know there was a news according to LC that there was a virus found in uh, tilapia cultured in Taal Lake so have you heard yeah. about that or that's that's the, tilapia, that, that's the tilapia lake virus, but it's not really of concern to humans because uh, it, 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 it cannot, it cannot uh, jump to humans. It's not zoonotic to humans, but it also causes um, uh, mortalities. But we suspect also that, you know, uh, the disease, disease phenomenon in, in Taal Lake is due to contribution of several factors which would be tilapia lake virus or, or, or and bacterial diseases. Any questions pa ho ba tayo? Uh, I for one have a, I think I have questions. Pwede pa idagdag. Um, sir, from okay. all of the sites that you have surveyed, uh, uh, which bacteria is uh, more prevalent and uh, are there correlation to the husbandry practices that you have you know found out there like iba ang practice nila sa taal sa sa say sa pampanga ganun san yeah. meron uh, bacteria uh, for example in in taal eh, wala kasi hindi ka hindi ka makaka-change water eh, kasi nagpo-float ng yung cage mm -hmm. So yung bacteria nandun na mismo sa water. Unlike in earthen ponds, in for example, in Visayas area, kapag there are episodes of diseases, they drain the water from the pond, mm -hmm. they line the pond, nag-aapog sila sa pond, they, they, they would follow, I mean, um, di sila magkukulture muna for a month or two months, mag-stop sila muna, i-dry out nila ang pond, magla-line sila, and then magkukulture sila. Pero you cannot do that one in Taal Lake because you cannot drain the, the lake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, yeah, these are some of the factors that why is it that the, the disease problem in Taal Lake is really yeah, prevalent. prevalent. Uh, and we know that uh, the tilapia in Taal Lake is supplied in NCR. Okay. So, sir, baka alam nyo yun, sa case kasi ng Laguna Lake, di ba, um, Parang very recently lang yata, last year or two years ago, uh, studies found out that uh, there's a high amount of uh, uh, what chemicals like antibiotics, uh, steroids, sex hormones, and fecal bacteria that are in the water. Actually, nakita nila din yun. Uh, they found it there in the tilapia. So ang tanong ko dun ay, um, make, is there a correlation between those factors? Because I would assume that these uh, uh, environmental factors that are present in Laguna Lake are probably lesser in, in Taal. I don't know about that. So uh, do you think there's a correlation or what's your opinion on that? Uh, because because our, our tilapia, our, our farms and cages are very near to human settlement. Mm -hmm. It should be the, the ideal should be the, the the farms and the cages should be far from human settlement because for example nakita ko sa Taal Lake in, even in Laguna Lake uh, um, malapit yung mga bahay and drainage ng kanilang toilet ng kanilang babuyan it goes to the lake so yung 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 sa, sa babo yung yung we know that the feeds for pigs maraming antibiotics yon and this antibiotics causes selected pressure to the bacteria in the lake. That's why they develop antimicrobial resistance. So interconnected lahat yun. So that's why we are detecting AMR genes already in, in our fish pathogens that are, yeah, 
that, 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 that when it can infect humans is quite a problem already because they did develop now multi-resistance. I see. Okay. So, uh, okay. Um, Ms. Cacho says that uh, she asks if it's possible that you could provide a present the copy of your paper or your, is it online? Probably we could just let them know uh, where to download uh, yeah. it. Yeah, my, 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 my paper on streptococcosis in tilapia is available online in the internet. Uh, it's an open access in, in Journal of Fish Diseases. Just type there, Francis Ligario, streptococcosis in the Philippines. You can download it for free because we submitted it we, as an open access in the Journal of Fish Diseases. Okay. So, and and uh, then if you have any question, Miss Elsie, uh, try to email me because my email is there so you can you can communicate with me okay thank you very much uh any more questions last questions last few questions uh going once twice and thrice so last chance po sa inyong lahat kung gusto yung magtanong kay sir francis oh, i guess parang wala na yata so with that sir francis maraming salamat po sa isang napakagandang presentation and uh, you know very informative especially now uh, you know pandemic etc we have problems <laughs> with our food security uh, yeah. we, lots of people are getting anxious of you know whether their food or their food are safe diba lalo na <laughs> yeah, ngayon yeah. ang dami eh. sa yeah. crops may problem we have fall yeah. army worm marami siyang sabay-sabay yeah. and uh, i think everything um ito mga ganung issue kasi it, it uh, gives uh, so much pressure lalo na sa atin no in terms of the, the economy and of course the overall well-being ng, ng Filipinos and uh, we are mm -hmm. thankful for you know uh, knowing this information directly from from you welcome okay so uh, with that we will be ending our program you can see in the chat box that i've put out the link to the evaluation form i'll just put it uh, uh, ilagay ko lang din ulit para doon sa mga hindi nakapansin. So please go to that evaluation form, uh, evaluation form, fill it up so that you can receive a certificate of uh, participation from from us, from the Museum of Natural History. Uh, may pahabol. Can you give uh, Sir Francis your email address uh, if they are, want you to communicate uh, with you? Can you just, uh, yeah. Uh, I can type. Type ko na lang dito? Yes, yes. Okay. To so chat box. Everyone. Sir. To everyone. Okay, so habang, while Sir Francis is uh, posting his uh, email address, I'll be sharing my screen. So yeah, it's posted will, already there. Yeah, okay. We will be... Okay. Just, uh, we just do this uh, traditional um, mm -hmm. giving out of the virtual certificate yeah. of participation. <laughs> so uh, the Museum of Natural History, uh, Office of the Vice Chancellor for Research and Extension here at UPLB, College Laguna, is uh, awarding this certificate of recognition to uh, Sir Francis S. Legario, for serving as our resource person uh, today during the 2021 MNH Biodiversity Seminar on the diversity of bacteria recovered from clinical infections in farmed Nile tilapia in the Philippines held today, February 19, 2021, 10 to 11.30 a.m. here in the Philippines via Zoom and in windows whereof. The signature of our director, Dr. Juan Carlos T. Gonzalez is affixed. So, maraming salamat, Sir Francis, and we will be emailing you this virtual certificate okay. in a matter of few hours. Okay. Yeah, so, welcome and thank you very much. So, before we end, we posted already the link to our uh, evaluation form, but if you're familiar with Bitly, so you could go to bit.ly slash 2021-bss-eval. Um, we will only accept responses until 5 p.m. And we 
we are inviting you to visit our website, mnh.uplb.edu.ph. And if you want to throw us an email, just write us at mnh.uplb.edu.ph. Um, we are available in social media, so check us up in uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. And we have several articles uh, posted in Wikipedia, and we also have uh, some information at TripAdvisor. So, dun sa mga hindi or those who have uh, some problems with their connection and uh, would like to uh, watch this uh, seminar all over again, we will be posting the recording on our YouTube channel probably tonight or early tomorrow. So, it's over at YouTube com slash UPLB museum um, check, check our Facebook uh, account facebook.com slash UPLB museum um, so that you will, will know whether the uh, webinar is already posted at our channel so you lang po maraming salamat next week we will have three more uh, biodiversity seminars to end our February edition and uh, it will be on uh, Monday uh, Wednesday and Thursday. So, para lang makapagpunta kayo doon and uh, makapag-register, go to our Facebook account and then makita nyo yung aming mga post for that uh, link to the registration. So, with that, maraming salamat po, Sir Francis, and I hope we meet again. Maraming salamat po sa inyo lahat. Yeah. Thank you very much and God bless and have a happy weekend sa inyo lahat.